I'm Michael, and I'm going to talk to you about Renode and how we simulate fairly complex systems with both 32 and 64 bit nodes, and Linux and Zephyr. Uh, a, a bit about Ant Micro we have been around for nine years now and developing Renode since the very beginning, more or less since the time that RISC-V was started in Berkeley. Uh, we're now a platinum founding member of the RISC-V Foundation, and uh, what we say about ourselves is that we turn ideas into software-driven products in various branches of industry, and the software trend is very visible in all we do. In the RISC-V uh, Foundation and community, uh, we're not only concerned with uh, tooling, that I'm going to talk about today, uh, but also methodology, adopting open source, uh, building early platforms, proof concepts. One of the demos that we're showing tonight will also be not related to Renode as such, although we have a Renode demo too. We also have a proof of concept for a space application, so be sure to check it out. And uh, how we can do so many different things? Well, it's all through a very simple method. We adopt a lot of open source everywhere, wherever we can. And uh, uh, we are highly software driven. And we try to find common denominators in everything we do. And RISC-V is great, because it is actually all about common denominators. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Renode today. Uh, uh, there's some technological uh, things that we've just published that I'll be mentioning, but one other important aspect is that we have a new website, so be sure to check it out. It's just renode.io. Uh, it should be, well, I hope you like it. In short, uh, we're an open source instruction set simulator, but also a whole framework built on top of that, so we don't just simulate course. We, we do much more than that. And a lot of people have been mentioning open source as if it was like something different than commercial. Uh, we don't agree with that. Uh, so we are an open source framework, but our company provides commercial services to build whatever you want on top of the open source Reno framework. Uh, the important aspects, I'll briefly go through them, uh, is that we are software agnostic. So whatever we run in the simulator, we want it to be the same stuff that you're running on the real hardware. Uh, this, we think, is very important for um, any kind of meaningful testing, debugging, and so on. Uh, we are also not just a core emulator. We emulate entire boards or even multi-node systems. I'll talk about that later. Uh, we're very scriptable and API-oriented. Um, and even though our cores are written in C for speed, uh, the rest of the framework is actually written in higher-level languages for flexibility. Uh, what we think is good with Renode is, uh, well, a couple of things, but the most important aspects are listed here. Uh, so we're fully deterministic. We can run uh, big setups with one virtual time domain that is kind of shared between all of them. Uh, we have very good debugging capabilities. We can do it transparently to the software. Uh, we e integrate easily because we're just an open source tool. So you can you know, bundle it with whatever you're doing, and uh, uh, you're free to experiment, for example. Uh, we have a very good model abstractions and a platform description format that we think matches uh, RISC-V uh, very well. And uh, we also integrate well with uh, CI systems and testing automation, which we think is, of course, crucial. Uh, so we've been talking a lot here today and probably tomorrow about CPUs and cores, because that's the RISC-V ISA. But there's, of course, many more levels that a real developer out there will probably be exposed to. So the, the broad development community is thinking in terms of systems, right? So the, uh, they have systems that are comprised of many devices. And in those devices, each of them might be actually a couple of PCBs connected together. Then those PCBs might include a few modules that then might have an SOC. That includes a CPU and other things, and of course, the CPU itself has cores and so on. So uh, there's many levels to it. And we want to say, uh, look, to do meaningful kind of methodological change in how people develop systems, uh, it's good to address actually all these levels, not just uh, the core of it. Uh, and we think that Renode is very well matched to RISC-V. Obviously, if you've seen the first slide, we've been around with Renode since 2010. So RISC-V back then wasn't really very popular outside Berkeley. Uh, so of course, we mostly simulated ARM systems. But uh, we think that how it all evolved is excellent. I mean, RISC-V is a perfect match because for example, we have this platform description format where uh, essentially we treat an SOC like a bundle of different components that you just mix and match and connect together in a file, you know, a, a plain text file. 
Um, so, and that's kind of how people are thinking about RISC-V currently. If you've heard the keynotes today from Rob and, uh, 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 and also perhaps uh, Yunsup's uh, talk, you can see that it's all evolving into this ecosystem where people will be connecting different things with different things in many different configurations. And this configurability uh, is very well matched with what we're doing in Renode. Uh, well, I won't say by accident, but uh, obviously we didn't plan for RISC-V to be so popular today, but it's, it's kind of worked out very well. And of course, some of the super important uh, developers, uh, developments recently that you've just heard about is the Hive have Unleashed that uh, we've been working with. Our friends at sci uh, have really reached a very important milestone, and we think this is super important for this kind of systematic approach to Risk Five. So it's all now all grown up, and you can build systems that use a wide vi variety of software, not just some real-time operating system, which is, of course, important too. But with Linux, um, you can really uh, go a long way. And to, to take a step further, I mean, our friends at MicroSemi, uh, to whom, by the way, we owe a lot of this, these developments, as they've been kindly uh, sponsoring and, and supporting this effort, uh, they've built something even better. <laughs> so this board has everything, right? And we can see how RISC-V is really getting into this complex systems that people can really break in many ways. So we want to help them unbreak them. So if we can say that 64-bit is twice the fun as compared to 32-bit that I was talking about uh, at the last workshop, I believe that two 64-bit platforms is probably four times the fun. So yeah, uh, that's what we can do in Renode. Uh, we can easily boot uh, Linux very quickly, and two of them at the same time. But if two Linuxes are four times the fun, then I believe that adding two more platforms, two of each, running two different operating systems into the mix, I've lost count, but it's probably a lot of fun. So that's what we can do. We'll be showing that in the evening at the reception, so be sure to come over and see. Uh, this setup is essentially communicating over UARTs, and we're talking from one Linux system through all those nodes. Two of them are My5, two of them are Hi5.1 into the last Linux system, and we're just showing the state of some virtual LEDs. And uh, the cool thing is we're just using some you know, bash scripts and, and like, and we could potentially do something much more complicated uh, without, without a problem. Uh, probably that's for, we can leave that for the summit. But the important thing is you can actually do all this and connect all these in one virtual environment. Uh, they're all living in the same virtual time domain. You can test and debug them all together. And you know this wouldn't be so great if not for all the other features we have. So one of them is the capability to simulate wireless networks. So how many of you, by the way, are uh, developing wireless chips based on RISC-V today? Yeah, I thought so. So please do, OK, because we, we'd like to simulate them. Uh, but uh, I assume, of course, that RISC-V will go into this domain sooner or later. And uh, uh, we can do a lot of things in the wireless domain, so simulate lossy uh, communications. And we can basically test entire protocols. So this is not RISC-V, of course, but the slide shows how we integrate with uh, Wireshark. And the two nodes are communicating over a, a IPv6 interface. And the Wireshark is just capturing this traffic uh, seamlessly. It doesn't know that it's actually looking at a virtual network. So we pride ourselves in integrating with external tools, especially open source tools, very, very well. And we have a plugin architecture to do that easily. So the Wireshark, for example, is a plugin. And if you wanted to integrate a similar tool, you'd probably write a plugin, or we could write a plugin for you. And that should be fairly easy. Another thing that we think is important is being able to simulate the environment. So um, we can have a system where we're not only just looking at the system itself, but we're looking that there's an external world influencing the system. We can simulate some kind of uh, different environmental conditions, uh, which we think, again, is very important from the systems engineering perspective. So if you really want to test your system well, you want to know what's going to happen in different corner cases, like, I don't know, different temperatures or uh, someone pressing a button very often. So so uh, we want to be able to do that so we have an environmental simulation capability. Uh, this is an example. So we're just reading out a sensor connected over a virtual SPI. This is real firmware that you'd normally real on, run on a real node, only we're running in a simulation and grabbing this information and showing it on a uh, like server. You all know this. Apache, it works 
thing. Um, so um, another thing that we're pretty good at is test-driven development, uh, not only from the me methodological perspective. We're an embedded company, so we're feeding all this methodological knowledge into our framework. But quite simply, Renote is designed to make that easy. So we can integrate with Robot, uh, BuildBot, GitLab CI, Jenkins, lots of tools for, for this, and we think it's uh, super important. Uh, we actually advocate a whole methodology around this, so that's a, that's a diagram showing how it normally work uh, in, in how we think you should work. So you work locally, but then you also get help from your colleagues using the same tools, and you also have a company environment perhaps where you're doing continuous integration. And we think that this is really the way to build robust and secure IoT uh, and other systems. Uh, this robot integration looks like this. So you write, you know, again, you write nicely formatted plain text files, and you can route those tests and get nice logs. This is not Reno's functionality. This is stuff that we get for free by integrating with external tools. That's the beauty of open source. Uh, and also collaboration. Uh, this aspect is super critical. If you we're going to go out to hundreds and thousands of developers out there, we need to make it easy for them to collaborate. And we thought that this is, should, again, be a primary concern of ours. So we started with uh, tools like saving and loading state and uh, recording and replaying events. We have all these things that enable you to take your work home, perhaps, or share it with a colleague at the end of the world. Um, there's a lot of things you can do without a major effort. So. Here we're showing a, a situation where we just saved the state in this node on the left, and then we opened Renode again and loaded the state again, and it's just the same because you know it's it's just saved to a file. It's all virtual. And where all these things come together, we think, is security, and not just security as the ch at the chip level, which is the primary concern of the RISC-V Foundation, but. Uh, even if you design your chip to be secure, um, at the systems engineering level, people are probably going to take it and you know, misuse it anyway, uh, write bad, buggy protocols, and we want to avoid that. So we want people to be able to work in a unified methodology to keep systems secure on many levels. And uh, funnily enough, Renode is actually being used within the foundation by some partners to uh, do chip level security. So I'm not saying this is like something you shouldn't do with Renode. Please do. We're, we're happy about it. Uh, but we can even do more. We can do you know, multi-node protocol level security all within this virtual world. Um, and uh, one of the sh use cases we're showing on a website is actually a customer for whom we've built an entire system. And that's why I'm so excited about the 64-bit support and the Linux-capable platform, because you can then simulate a gateway and sensors all connected in one network, uh, perhaps wired, perhaps wireless. And uh, all of this you can really test and debug in multiple scenarios with multiple corner cases. And that's how you guarantee you know, that your system is good and tested and secure. And that's, I think, that and risk 5 and related tech is how we can get into a world where things really work and uh, uh, it's not this IoT nightmare that everyone's talking about. So if that got you interested, come to talk to us. We're very open. Uh, we, of course, open, offer commercial services, and uh, we help people to not only just implement things in Renode, well, of course, that's very simple, but also more generally adopt a good software methodology and uh, adopt open source. We help people build proof of concepts of some crazy ideas that might have related to RISC-V. Uh, so be sure to just come over at the demo uh, this evening and uh, discuss this with us. Thank you. I was wondering whether your platform allows, um, if you're having some OS running in your Renode, whether you can then communicate with uh, an actual hardware implementation that's also running a separate OS, if there's any communication link between the two. You mean the real world and the simulated world? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. We've, we've done that a lot. Hmm? Should be simple. Both of the hosts, but you could also interface with like external boards.